Hey guys, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and this is our first video review. We actually have hundreds of article reviews on our website. That's GamersNexus.net, if you did not catch that earlier. So what better game to start video reviews with than Oryx Must Die? It's just, it's so simple, but so crazy awesome at the same time. And the game has gotten a lot of attention from us over the past week. Yes, we did have early access to it for PC, so if you go to our YouTube channel, you will see a couple of videos already. I will be uploading more still and maybe a few walkthroughs for some of the more difficult levels. That said, Orcs Must Die is a really simple game. All you do is defend your rift. Your rift is essentially the what you're defending in a tower defense game, which is going to be the very end of the level, and as orcs go into it, it is actually going to lead to your doom, so you want to keep them out of there. The rift is just a big blue shiny ball of magic, and this magic, as far as the story goes, which isn't hugely important in a tower defense game, but the story just says that the rifts are the source of magic in the world, and we as the war mage, and that is our that is our class, by the way, a war mage, we must close off these rifts and make sure that the orcs do not proceed through them and destroy the villages and hamlets of whatever our world is. Now, of course, in the story, this leads to the inevitable uh, removal of magic. I won't spoil too much, but um, that's just story. It's not really going to affect the game too much. So, keep orcs out of the rift. That's your first objective, and really your only objective, other than maybe not die. So, as orcs go in, you do lose these things called rift points, which are essentially uh, how many orcs are allowed to go through the rift before you lose the, the level. And each level has a couple... Some of them have a couple different doors that orcs can come in through, which really encourages complexity and encourages your trap design. So if they can come in from two sides and have two different hallways, that means one hallway might be better, for example, to lay dozens of arrow traps in. And just as the orcs move through, they get shot to ribbons by arrow traps. Another hallway might be better for, depending on the construction of the hallway, might be better for ceiling mounted mashing traps that smash them into the floor. So pretty cool stuff. Now there are a lot of traps. I don't know the exact number. I can check that for you. But it's uh, the traps, sadly, are relatively underpowered for the most part. They're, you will end up using the same four or five traps throughout the entire game. That's what I found anyway. And as you unlock more traps, you unlock one each level. Uh, as you unlock more, you'll find that some of them are more or less effective and never use some of the older ones again, which to me is really sad because I, when I saw this game, I was hoping that trap combos would be highly encouraged by more points or more something to reward the player with. For example, comboing maybe, I don't know, a steam trap that launches orcs into the air 10 feet, for example, with a ceiling mashing trap that smashes them back down into the floor and kills them, or something to that extent that's kind of cool and, and perpetually amusing for you to watch as a player, but they're not really rewarded in the way I want, so it's normally more effective to just use, for example, this is the staple trap for the whole game, tar pits, which slow orcs down immensely. So you put tar pits at the entrance of the door, then you put archers up on a cliff, which aren't really traps, they're called guardians, but they're in your trap book. And then the archers can shoot the orcs in the tar pit as they're slow, slowed down, and you can also use explosive barrels in the middle of there, which are basically powder kegs. And the archers will shoot that on occasion uh, just from crossfire, and that will kill all the orcs. It's a really boring way to win the game, and unfortunately it does work on most levels. But if you're the kind of person that can look past those types of combos and make yourself use new combos and new trap groupings, then great for you, you will love this game. If you're the kind of person who once you figure that you figure out an overpowered or cheesy strategy, you may have trouble uh, getting through this game without beating yourself in the head a few times for using the same tactics over and over. Now that said, the level design is pretty fluid and very, very good. You can Each level is designed to encourage as many trap types as possible despite everything I just said. Uh, some of them are very open. Um, so that does lend itself to more archers or guardians, but the ones that are closed and condensed and all hallways and typical traditional uh, stereotypical cast castles, there you go, that was a lot of words that mean the same thing right there. Uh, just basically castles and hallways are my favorite for traps because they really, really push you to do new things that are cooler. And you'll see in some of our gameplay videos we have stuff like swinging maces coming from the ceilings that are 
synchronized or even asynchronous combined with things like, uh, I don't know, maybe arrow traps in the walls so any orcs that get past the swinging maces will get shot up by arrow traps and then you can have spike traps in the floor that poison them so if they get past those arrow traps they will be poisoned and then die by the time they get to the rift and all the awesome stuff like that so some more sweet stuff about this game the art style and art direction is amazing it's just normally I'm not a huge fan of cartoony games and this game is cartoony but not to the extent that WoW is for example it's really Orcs Must Die is more of a cell shaded comic book cartoon style which I think is just awesome because you don't see a lot of that even though a lot of game companies have done that kind of art style Orcs Must Die just really takes it to a new level and really puts you in this fantasy world and in this more of a fantasy comic book really um, so art direction is awesome the action is very, very fast-paced, so this is a tower defense game mixed with hack and slash, or hack and shooter, I guess, because you do have a crossbow. If you are a fan of hack and slash, or of games where you're using magic and crossbows and spells to kill things, you will probably like Orcs Must Die. If you're a fan of strategy and tower defense, you will probably like Orcs Must Die. If you sort of like both of those, you will love Orcs Must Die. That's just how they designed it, and I think it's brilliant personally, because then they get two genres, and tower defense is sort of a smaller genre in comparison, and hack and slash is more of a blanket one. So they really, really try to appeal to everyone there, and they do it in a way that combines and doesn't feel forced or sloppy. So that is great on them. Huge props for that. The replayability is another fantastic... Uh, fantastic element in this game. They do have two modes. They have an apprentice mode, which is essentially beginner or easy, and they have war mage, which is normal or medium. And those, you know, they're normal mo modes. There's noth nothing special about them at all. But you do unlock nightmare mode at the end. And normally, guys, I am the type of person that never replays a game after I beat it. If I beat it, I'm just, I'm done. That's it. I don't want to see it again unless it's multiplayer or something. But this game, I actually did go back into Nightmare Mode and start playing it again. And it is a lot harder. Of course, uh, the reason I went back is because as you go through the game the first time, as long as you don't force yourself to restart every level over and over, you will learn new traps and you or and new trap combos and new effective ways to kill orcs. And it's all about efficiency in this game, how rapidly you kill orcs. So as you learn those throughout the game, you really want to go back and try those initial levels over again, which you can do in medium mode, but might as well just do it in nightmare mode and get more points and more kills and more awesome in general. So uh, that's why I'm replaying this game, because I can reuse those new combos I learned and that's what I love about it. So replayability is huge in this. Great, great job on Robot Entertainment for that. More concerns I have, uh, as I was sort of saying, many of the traps are useless or very, very cost inefficient. So you might, if you want to do trap combos that are like I was talking about, like a steam trap blasting orcs into the air and then shooting them off over a cliff into lava with a masher trap, or even in one of the earlier levels I had set up a spring trap which pops up from the floor and springs them on sort of an arched angle towards wherever you face the trap. I set one of those up and it shot them over an acid pit. Normally you want to shoot them in it, but I was shooting them over it onto another one of those that shot them back. And then they shot back and landed on the first one and shot back over again. And then I filled, uh, I put spike traps around it so if the orc missed or bounced or ragdolled too much, they would hit a spike trap and die. So it was a lot of fun but I could have killed them way faster just by doing arrow walls or archer traps or explosive barrels. So really not a ton of encouragement to do fun stuff like that, especially since those fun setups normally take longer, and taking longer does take off your points. The faster you are, the more efficient you are, the more points you get, the more upgrades you get. And on that note, upgrades in this game are sort of lame and sort of a letdown, really, if I'm honest. There's essentially just uh, cheaper traps or slightly stronger traps. Nothing super innovative like uh, I would have loved to see the wall blades upgrade to be visually different, a new model or something to that extent uh, when I upgraded them. But alas, they were not that special. They were just slightly more effective. And the same goes for almost everything else. They might be have a slight stylized difference, very slight, 
but no, not really any new models or any new effects from them other than maybe more damage essentially. You can get poison, but it's basically all just comes down to more damage. So those were kind of disappointing. There is no level editor either, so once you finish the game, and if you play Nightmare Mode, once you finish that, you're done. That's maybe... So it took me nine hours to finish the game on medium mode with uh, restarting the levels multiple times over and over because I wanted to get the perfect score or the best score I could. So nine hours is probably going to be the average if you're like I am. If you're a fast player and you just want to get through it or you're incredibly talented at these games, then it will probably take you, I would guess, seven to eight hours. And if you're going to replay, you probably get probably 15 max is around is around where you t you taper off there. So I'd say 15 max on the outlier end. Um, so level editors would really free that up and make it so you could add a lot more. They did say there's some discussion, but no plans of release yet. And I guess really one of my final complaints is probably no freestyle mode. I wish you could just go play with no time limit and with endless waves of orcs coming in on all the basic levels, just no objective really. Obviously, you, you know, maybe have no rift points, that way you can just let orcs go through and not have any penalty and not lose. Because I would love a freestyle mode to set up traps so they can just kill orcs in the coolest ways possible, even if it takes forever to kill them, you know, because it, it's a lot of fun to watch those traps work. And the art style really makes it even more fun to watch the orcs die, as horrible as that sounds. But uh, it's just missing a few core elements that I would have really loved to see in this type of game. That does not mean it's a bad game. It is a very, very good game. And there are lots of levels, probably 23 I think I counted, maybe 24, somewhere around there. So lots of levels, lots of replayability, uh, great gameplay mechanics in general, fluid level design, fast-paced action, and all that great stuff that you want in a game. Uh, the only reason you would not like it, I would say, is if you are an orc. Uh, but beyond that, it is a pretty great game, especially for 15 bucks. You get a minimum of 8 or so hours, and maybe probably a max of 15 to 20 if you really, really replay it heavily. Uh, I would say much more if there were a freestyle mode, but alas, there is none. Maybe DLC, my wish will be granted. We'll see. Uh, anyway, Orcs Must Die is available now for XBLA and for PC, so check that out. We will have a written review up for those who, for some reason, want to see even more about this game, and I do not blame you because it is pretty awesome. Uh, I would say check out the demo. There is a demo available, so play it. If you don't like it, no problem. You didn't waste any money. If you do like it, then great. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Orcs Must Die. Please like this video. Please subscribe to our channel. It helps us keep producing awesome videos like this, and we will talk to you guys next time. Peace.